Hey, welcome back to Connection Point Studies. We're glad to have you here. Again, I have a guest with me here today. This is uh, Pastor Larry. It's great to have him along in this journey as we've been talking about the family business. Today we're talking about the bottom line. And the bottom line for a business is what? Profit. Profit. <laughs> okay, so what makes a family profitable? That's kind of an interesting question, isn't it? It is. That's an interesting question. Um, I think it's a functional family. Okay. Now, this is what we're going to dig in today. And the scripture that we look at today really looks at the bottom line. What, how do you define profit, not only for a family, but in our own personal life? How do we define the bottom line for us as a family and as well as our personal life? So what, let's dig right in. Let's, let's get right after it. Now, we have a warm-up question for you. The warm-up question means everyone in your group has to answer this question. You can't skip. You need to do this. This is a chance for you just to share a little bit on your own and reveal a little bit about yourself. So, Larry, let's start them out. What's the warm-up? Okay. When, you were, when you were a child, who did you most want to imitate? And what characteristic was it that made them so appealing to you? Then... Uh, Think about now, who now would you like to most imitate in your life? And then before you come back, I'm going to ask you to look up Ephesians chapter 5 and read verses 1 through 20, and we're going to dig into that scripture for today. Okay, so Larry, uh, as you think about your own life, who did you want to be like as a kid? Well, I, I think early, probably Superman or Batman or something yeah. like that. But actually, when I was maybe... 11 or 12 years old, I wanted to be like our pastor. That's kind of cool. I, you know, I had a missionary in mind, to be honest with you. I, I remember uh, this guy coming to town and talking to me, and, and I, I was excited about, I thought, you know, I could do that. That's something I, I really could do. So I, I'm kind of a similar thing. So it's kind of neat that we're in the positions that we're in. <laughs> it, it would be fun to hear your stories as to who you wanted to imitate. Well, really, this passage of scripture is all about imitation as well and so what we want you to do is to begin to look at this passage a little deeper and we've got a question for you um, and really it's a three-part question we want you to look at three verses verses one two and eight and we want you to think about the three standards that represent uh, what I think Paul has set out for us to have as being coming uh, are really the bottom line for us as Christians. So take a look at those verses and we'll come back and talk about them. Okay, so Larry, let's read those verses and just kind of look at them real okay. quick here. Verse 1 says, To imitate God, therefore, in everything you do, because you are His dear children. Okay, so let's stop here just for a second now. So the first one, and I think everybody got this one, was to imitate God. Mm -hmm. It's kind of what we talked about earlier. It's uh, the imitation. Do your kids imitate you? They do. <laughs> I bet they, that's they funny, love right? to put my shoes on and walk around the room, and yeah, they, they imitate mom too. Does Josh oh, yeah, to imitate yeah. mom yeah. and all that? Definitely. How about your older kids? Do they imitate you anymore? Uh, not anymore. Oh, come on. Uh, no. Your son is the master of, of uh, sarcastic imitation, right? Well, he, he is a lot like me, but <laughs> I don't know that he's intentional about that. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, you know, here's the thing. When we imitate God, you can't go wrong, right? As you think about how to live your life, if you imitate God, some really good things happen in your life. Now, let's look at verse 2. Verse 2 says, live a life filled with love Following the example of Christ, He loved us and offered Himself as a sacrifice for us, a pleasing aroma to God. So when you look at that verse, um, we're talking about sacrificial love, being willing to think of other people first. In the family, in our own personal life, that's a great bottom line value. It really is, yeah. It's a great bottom line value. You can tell you're hitting a profit margin when you've got that kind of love in your life. Mm -hmm. There's a third verse here. Found in verse 8. For once you were full of darkness, but now you have light from the Lord. So live as a people of light. You know, I look at that verse, I think about um, a lot of families have dark secrets, don't they? And yeah. a bottom line um, for a family should be that they develop a life that's in the light. That there's nothing hidden, secret, behind the scenes. That we get things out in the open, we talk about them, we get better, we admit when we, when we failed, and we move on. Now there's a a second question we want you to focus on right now. And, and this actually has to do with verse 5. Just like there are three qualities that we ought to imitate, there's three qualities that we should stay away from. 
I want you to look at verse 5 and take a look at the three qualities we should stay away from that are not good bottom line qualities. All right, Larry, let's, uh, let's read verse 5. Verse 5, you can be sure that no immoral, impure, or greedy person will inherit the kingdom of Christ and of God, for a greedy person is an idolater, worshiping the things of this world. This is kind of interesting. There's, there's three qualities here, just like the other uh, question, kind of a three-part question. The first quality is immoral. What, what do you think that means? Um, lacking morals. Yeah, they, there's no moral compass in their life. And boy, as a family, we need to bottom line, and that is a, there needs to be a moral compass that's more than just our self-centered nature. The second one is? Uh, impure. Impure, which just simply means that just what it says, that we... We're not living correctly. We know we're not living correctly. And motives and all yeah. of those kinds of yeah, things. Yeah, that's true. Mm-hmm. And then the third quality uh, that we need to stay away from? Being greedy. Yeah. How do you teach your kids? Uh, you get young kids at home. How do you teach your kids not to be greedy? Well, it probably starts early, w- even in teaching them to share toys, where they've got to learn that they've got to share. But then, I, for me, um, it was really important for me to get my kids to the mission field, Oh yeah. To begin to see how fortunate we are mm-hmm. as compared to much of the world and, and hopefully to instill in them the desire to, to give themselves away. Yeah. You know, this is a quality that every one of us need to develop, this quality of generosity. The opposite, of course, is greed. And it's interesting that it's one of the three qualities that you're not supposed to be like in this whole Well, he study. calls the greedy person an idolater. Yeah, and which they have is an true. idol. Yeah, it's yeah, the we, idol of money. Idol of money in our lives. Now we're going to look uh, a little bit further at the bottom line. And question four that we want you to focus on is: According to verse nineteen and twenty, what qualities do you see now that are bottom line qualities for the spirit filled life? Okay. We're going to look again now at question three, and what we want you to do is look at verses 19 and 20, and we're going to look at some qualities that are bottom line qualities for the Spirit-filled life. Okay, let's read those verses, Larry. Singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves and making music to the Lord in your hearts, and give thanks for everything to God, the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, what do you do with that if you can't sing? I, well, <laughs> I think you, this is a command. You've got to sing. You've got to sing. If you're going to be trying to get everyone to sing, right? Spiritually filled, you've got to sing. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, really, though, isn't this more about um, having a song in your heart? It's more about being positive, isn't it? it it's... Well, when we first read this, I almost thought, you know, this, this really is almost our core values. We start off with the celebration, this celebration, this idea of celebrating all that God is. Yeah, we have a party that we invite people to. I agree, it's Every celebration, week. right? Right. And our second core value is connection, which this talks about you do this to each other among yourselves. So that's what you're doing in a small group today is you're connecting with each other and, and encouraging each other. And then thirdly, um, our third core value is contribution, contribution mm-hmm. which is what we do, giving away, giving our lives away. That's exactly what this is. Well, hopefully you've had a chance to think about the bottom line in your life. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to think of one last question. If you were to take one phrase out of this scripture here today as your bottom line for this week and for your life and for your family, what would the phrase you would select? That means everyone in your group needs to select a phrase and make it your phrase and take it with you. And what I want you to do is take a minute Pick your phrase and then share it with your group. And then as a whole group, take time and encourage each other and pray for each other. And uh, next week, we will not have connection point studies. In fact, next week's a listen to the music, which means that we encourage you to have a social time. So take a little bit of time to plan the social time at the end of your time. And we'll see you in two weeks at connection point studies.